Hi, my beloved people, welcome to our study today in the new book, the book of Naum, uh, which has got uh, three chapters. So today I want us to do the introduction to the book of Nahum. So it is important for us to have uh, a bit of history of the Jews' uh, culture or of the Jews' uh, uh, life. So from the time when Solomon died and is son, up to this time of this prophet, Israel was divided into two parts, the northern kingdom, which had ten tribes, and the southern kingdom, which had only two tribes. And uh, so there was Israel. Israel now at this time refers to the ten kingdom which was on the northern part of Israel. And Judah refers to as the southern kingdom, which had only two tribes, Judah and the Benjamin. So, uh, northern kingdom, because of their rebellion against God, immediately uh, the son of Solomon took over and they split into two. They started bowing before idols they erected idols and they forgot the true living god and as a result now god sent many prophets to them to warn them to correct them to rebuke them to remind them of who god was but they didn't listen they continued to ignore god they continued to rebel against god and now, as a result, God sent uh, a superpower by the name Assyrian, which was the superpower between 700 BC all the way to 800 BC. So God used the Assyrian to come and correct his people, Northern Kingdom, because of their rebellion against known God's will. That is what is called transgression. So at this time now, when this prophet is prophesying and and the message of the, of the prophet in Naum is to the people of Nineveh, to the city of Nineveh. So Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. And at this time now, Naum himself, who was from the northern kingdom of Israel, is in captivity because it is believed, it is not clear because it is not indicated in the scripture that the prophecy or, or the prophet Naum did his prophecy between 650 BC. But there are, there are no clear evidence in the scripture. But the scholars find that to be the likely time when uh, Nahum prophesied because of the time when Assyrian were overthrown as the prophecy here was meant to inform them that they were going to be overthrown. Now, earlier, about 150 years earlier, a prophet by the name Jonah was sent by God to the same city. In the book of Jonah, we have already done the studies in the book of, of Jonah, who is also a minor prophet. So for the detailed study on the book of Jonah, you can check in my YouTube channel, and we are going to see all the studies on the book of Jonah, which was concerning Nineveh. So at that time now, that is 50 years earlier than when Nahum was prophesying, we see now at that time God or relented. God relented from sending calamity to the people of Nineveh in the city. But this time round, as we are going to see in the stand of the book of Nahum, God is not going to relent from sending calamity, from destroying them. Because the wrath of God is now ripe. Now means the time when Nahum was prophesying to them. So it is important for us to realize that God is patient. He is slow to anger. He relents from sending calamity. 
but by no means does he allow the wrongdoing, the evil, to continue to progress. And when we study the prophecy, the prophecy are very important to our life because they assist us to see the nature of God. Because God was dealing with the people of Assyrian, God was dealing with the people of the city of Nineveh, he is the same God who is dealing with us today. And now when we study and we see the, the rebellion, the disobedience, the mistake the Assyrians had made, we learn a lesson from them. We learn examples to avoid. So, Jonah, Jonah thought that uh, God was supposed to destroy Nineveh because of their sin, because of their brutality, because of their rebellion. But now, during the time of Jonah, the wrath of God had not come to, to its mature. That is why now, us, our objective should be to do what God tells us to do, not what we think it is the best for God, because God knows what is best for him, and it is God who created time and season. So God has the exact time when he is going to correct his people who continue to rebel, who continue to disobey. But all the time, as we look at the scripture, we see that God, first of all, brings the warning. He brings the warning before he brings judgment. God will always alert his people of what is going to happen. And even today in our society, before God brings any disaster, there must be a warning. There must be a message which God has brought to his people. So our response should be to take the warning from God seriously. So let us now come to the prophet Naum. When we read the book of Naum, we see it has three, it has got three chapters. Chapter one has 15 verses, chapter two, 13 verses, and chapter three, it has got 19 verses. So we have 15, 13, and 19, a total of 47 verses. Now, this book can be read by any believer who is a serious believer within one sitting. It is a simple oh, book, simple in terms of the length, the length of the prophecy. And all the prophecy which is written in the book of Nahum, it is related because all of it, it is concerning the city of Nineveh. So, in verse 1 of the book of of the book of Nahum, we see the name, the name of the name of the of the prophet given, and we are told that there was a burden or oracle concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Ecosite. So Ecosite it is the place where Nahum was born. Uh, many people don't really understand what that place is, or where it is today. But through guesses and through the traditions, it is believed that he was born in a place which is Kapinaum. So at this time now, when uh, Naum is prophesying, he was born in the land of captivity. At this time now, the people of Israel, Northern Kingdom, they are, they are under the they are under the bondage of Assyria. Assyria are the superpower. They are ruling. They are reigning now. So, Naum was born under that uh, reign of Assyria. And now the message of God comes to him so powerfully that he was to speak. He was to speak to them concerning their destruction. And as a result now, uh, chapter 1, we are going to see God proclaiming the one who bring, brings this message, it is God himself. And uh, God is against the people of Assyria, as we are going to see. He is against the people of Assyria in chapter 1. We are going to see him being jealous of them because of their, of their disobedience, because of their rebellion. 
which they are delivered from God. So chapter 1 tells us who, who is speaking. So it is God who is speaking here. It is God who is intervening on behalf of his people. On behalf of his people, Israelite, who have been in, in captivity under the hands of under the hands of Assyrians. And remember, it is God who used them. But now these people, they didn't follow God's way. They were so br brutal in the process of them uh, correcting the Israelites. They overdid it. And now God here was to correct them. God was to punish them, as we have seen in the other prophet, like the prophet, like prophet Jeremiah and the prophet Isaiah, who prophesied concerning uh, also the other nations. Since now they didn't do it the way God wanted it to be done, so we see God here now intervening in his own timing so that he could rescue his people, Israel. So in this prophet, I mean in this prophecy, there is a mixture of joy uh, and deliverance from God's people. So to the Israelites, it is, it is a joy for them. Actually, there is a verse we are going to see here which says, How beautiful for those who bring good tidings on the mountains, who say, Peace be to Jerusalem. So to the people of Israel, it was a joy to them. It was the time of deliverance. It was a time of them rejoicing because now their enemy were going to be destroyed. The people were overthrown them. Imagine a country invading another and now relocating all the people and resettling that country. That was the scenario which Assyrian had done. But now it is, it is a disaster for the enemies of God. That is the Assyrian. So when God intervenes in life, there are two things which occur concurrently. It is the time of joy for those who are in God. And it, at, at the same time, it is the time of disaster for those who are rebellion against God. And actually that is what will happen even in the last day when Christ come. Christ will come as a judge. But not to judge those who are in him. It is to judge those who will have rejected him. So it will be a time of joy, a time of celebration for those who have believed in him, for those who will be in Christ Jesus. At the same time, it will be a time of disaster, a time of suffering, because God will execute vengeance against the Antichrist, together with all the people who have refused Christ Jesus. So in chapter 1 of the book of Nahum, we are going to see the proclamation. God himself speaking and intervening. And as in God intervenes, we see his people Israel, Israelites being delivered from the captivity. And we are going to see now the enemy of God's people being destroyed. Remember, in our dispensation currently, we don't have enemy in the time of human, human being. We have a common enemy who is Satan, the one who opposes all what God wants to be done. So that is our common enemy. So your friend is not your enemy, your brother, your sister, your relative, your neighbor is never your enemy. So never fight the wrong battle. So that's why God says, even we leave vengeance to him, and God knows how to execute vengeance. So in this book, the one who is speaking it is God. He is speaking through uh, his servant, Naum. And as he speaks, disaster is coming. Disaster is coming to Nineveh. Nineveh will be destroyed. Right now, there is no point of return. It is not like the time of Jonah when God relented. But this time around, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And now, God's people will be delivered. And as we move on, we are going to see who destroyed it and how. Now, we are going to, chapter 2, we are going to see the description. We are going to see how. How is Nineveh? How did it, how was it to be destroyed? How was it to be destroyed? So there would be a day of looting. There would be by the den of lions. Now, uh, 
as serious were as they were as powerful as the lion. At this season of their life, they were controlling almost all the known world by then. They were the ones who are controlling. They were so powerful. You can compare with them with the superpower of our 21st century. So that is how they were. You can imagine now this message which came that also them they were going to be destroyed. Actually, initially they didn't believe. They thought it is a joke. Because today if you go and speak to any superpower country in 21st century and you tell them that within a few years to come, you are going to be destroyed. You are going to be no more. They, they are going to love at you because they have all what it takes militarily in terms of economy. They are above any 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 nation. So they will not believe. So even these people, I believe at that time, they didn't trust whether this message could be true. But you know God is always true. God always keeps his word. And there is nothing which is impossible to God. Particularly when God, when it comes to to God executing his righteous judgment. So chapter 2 gives us the description. It tells us how the land of, particularly the city, the city of Nineveh, how it would be destroyed. At this time, this time we are referred to about 650 BC. This city was fortified. Fortified means it had the walls which was to make it secure. And it was very prosperous economically, materially. It was doing very, very well. As you know, in any superpower, their, their capital city, it, it, is, it is very, 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 very wealthy in terms of material things, in terms of security, in terms of development. And of course, at the same time, what happens now, because of the population in the city, even the evil increases. And, and that is one of the reasons as to why God was to judge these people. Although initially they had relented. I mean, although it is initially God had relented from sudden calamity, we see after 150 years, from the time Jonah preached to them and they repented, now uh, we see people now turn to their wickedness. So human being has a tendency of forgetting the goodness of God. Human being has a tendency of even forgetting the word of God. And going back to Egypt. Going back to Egypt means going back to the world system. That is the tendency. That is the nature of humankind. And that is why now we need to watch out for our salvation. We need to watch out and we need to be connected to God constantly. Otherwise, we may find ourselves having disconnected ourselves. And also, even the ventures which we are building in our life, it is very important for you and for me to build them on the solid rock, who is Christ Jesus. As we are going to see now, imagine this city, this superpower, by the name Nineveh, as we are speaking today, it was destroyed, completely destroyed, by the other superpower whom God made to rise. That is the Babylonians. Babylonians are the ones who overthrew the Assyrians. And God allowed them to rise in power, purposely to fulfill his purpose. So there is nothing permanent except the word of God. Even the countries which you see today and uh, being very glamorous, provided they are not building their, their countries on the solid rock, who is Christ Jesus, then you can be assured that uh, a time is coming when there will be no more. A time is coming when there will be no, no more. That is, that is the truth. It doesn't matter how powerful they are. And not only the country, even individuals, who build their life outside what, what is godly, sooner or later, whatever they have, it will fly away. It doesn't matter how much they have. It doesn't matter how much they have gathered. That's why now God tells us that you should never envy the wicked. We should, not, we should never fret, even when we see the wicked prosper. But rather, God tells us to trust in him, to rely on him, to depend on him, and to delight ourselves in the Lord. And to commit all our ways unto the Lord. And he is going to make our path rises. So to these people, to this city by the name Nineveh, regardless of the way it was fortified, at this time it has about 120,000 people, a very huge population by then, it would be destroyed through innovation. 
the the Babylonians would invade it and destroy it completely. And exactly that is what happens. Actually, Nineveh currently, the current place of Nineveh, it is a modern day Iraq. That is where Nineveh was, particularly near a city called Moscow. That is where uh, uh, Nineveh was twisted and it was constructed near River Tigris. River Tigris. So, what God did, the river Tigris flooded. And when it flooded, it corroded the wall of the city. It made the wall weak. It weakened the wall of the city. And all this was happening through divine plan of God. Whereby now, as the wall was weakening with time and with years, there, there was another superpower which was rising by the name Babylonian. And as time went by, because now of the weakening of the war of the city of Nineveh, Babylonians were able to invade this great city, whereby they destroyed it completely. They burnt it down into ashes as we are speaking, and they took them into bondage. And in the process now, the people of God were set free not free completely, but now they were they were under another superpower by the name Babylonian, who are not as brutal as Assyrians. Assyrians were very brutal. They used to cut the pieces of the people. They could cut them into pieces and they could arrange they could arrange them as ifs. And now they could enjoy to see them the way they were. That is the kind of brutality these people were doing to the people of God. And now we see their time expiring. So don't be worried. Even when you see evil appearing, all the time, mark my words, it is appearing. The evil at times appear to be succeeding, to be winning. But God declares that evil will never win. Evil will never overcome good. So all the time, good is going to overcome evil. So, uh, we have seen that uh, in chapter 1, we are seeing God proclaiming. God proclaiming uh, that uh, this city would be destroyed. And when it would be destroyed, it is because of God's own divine intervention. And in this intervention, we see two types of outcome. The people of God being delivered from their captivity. And we see now the enemies of God being destroyed. The disaster to the enemies of God. Number two, we are seeing now the description. How it would be destroyed. It would be destroyed through innovation. And now it would be a day of looting. Of course, whenever a country is overthrown, the people who have overthrown it uh, take advantage. And they take all the resources which are valuable in that particular country. Finally, we are going to see why. Why would the city of Nineveh be destroyed? And, God, and we know God is not a destroyer. God does not destroy anything. It is that these people of Nineveh, because of their rebellion, because of their disobedience, their own sin was the one which was destroying themselves. Actually, God does not destroy anyone. It is people who destroy themselves by their own rebellion. God created nature to so nice that uh, when we, we reject God, God does not have to judge us. We judge ourselves. For instance, if you remove fish from the water, you don't have to kill that fish. Or if, or if fish itself decide to come out of water, actually that fish will never survive. Even, even, even 10 minutes outside the water, it, can, it cannot survive. Why? Because fish was created to depend on water. As long as fish is in, is in water, then it has life. As long as it, it has removed itself from water or it has been removed, then there is no life. Also in our life, as long as we remain connected to our maker, then we have abundance of life. All the time there is life. But when we choose to disconnect ourselves from our maker, then we cease to live. Because now, he is our source. God is our source. 
He has given us breath of life. And when we detach ourselves from him, God does not have to judge us. The, judge, the judgment is inherent to the action which we take. So that is when God is always perfect in his judgment. God, all judgment of God are all the, they are all true. They are all true. So to the people of Assyria, because of their rebellion, uh, uh, we see now they would be destroyed. They were very inhuman. And God would use force. God would use force to destroy them. And these people were so corrupt. They, they were so corrupt. They didn't value human life. They were so pro prosperous economically. They were so rich materially. There were so many resources in the city of Nineveh. But now they rejected God. They didn't see any value of godliness. Although God had reached out to them. Although God had given them warning. They continued to ignore what God was saying. So we have seen the, that uh, the, the city would be destroyed through force. And this force would be executed by the Babylonian who were rising superpower. So the how we see God intervening. Uh, we, we see the innovation, the how it is the who is God, how there will be an innovation, and why it is because of their rebellion, it is because of the injustices which they were practicing. And even in our society today, it is important for us to learn from this our brothers uh, in the land of Nineveh who revealed, who rejected God. And when they, uh, when they rejected God, we see God himself intervening. And even now it is important for us to realize that God shall for sure intervene because he is the same God. When countries reject God, when individuals reject God, when families reject God, then remember God always intervene. And God has so many mechanisms of intervening and executing his righteous judgment. The question is, how could a city which had humbled itself in totality within very few years, that is 150 years, how could it have turned into rebellion, into rejecting God? And already they had earned the, the fame of the name of the true living God. That tells you that uh, it is possible, even for the people who know the truth, to reject the truth and to go down to Egypt, to go down to the world and to continue practicing rebellion. That is very important. That is very critical. And that is why now we are supposed to always remain connected to our maker and to watch out so that we don't fall short of the glory of God. Even as today, we need to guard ourselves. Otherwise, we may find our, ourselves going to the same road. Going to the same road that, uh, that these brothers of ours went. But that, that is not the will of God for us. The will of, of God for us is that we may remain in him all the days of our life. So, the name of this prophet, Nahum, means comforter or consolation. So, Nahum was a comforter to the people of God. And as I went up this in, in, uh, introduction, uh, it is important for us now. We see the people of Nineveh during the time of Jonah, they repented, and God forgave them. God restored them. And after some years, about 150 150 years, we see them now falling down to the same practice of rebellion, of carnality. Now to us, as believers of Jesus Christ, how can we, how can we remain connected to God? How can we sustain our spiritual life? God is committed into sustaining us. God is Start something and bring it to fulfillment. Actually, the Bible declares that whatever God has begun, whatever good work God has begun in you, 
is going to bring it to fulfillment. But even as now we have a role to play, we have a role to play. Provided we play our role, God is always faithful. God has never failed, He will never fail. So whenever you see yourself failing, remember it is you who have chosen to fail. Because your father is always victorious. Actually, he has overcome. And in him also, he has overcome. So number one, we can guard ourselves from falling by avoiding being too busy for God. So we are living in, in, in society whereby there are so many things which are distract us. Such that people can find time to do all other things apart from interacting with the message from the kingdom of God. So it is important for us to watch out from the best, from the busy, from the activities which we have. Actually, the more you find yourself having so many activities such that you have no time to read the scripture, you have no time to stand the word of God, because the word of God is critical. The word of God is the foundation of all other disciplines of a life of a believer. So the word of God is the foundation. Because we pray as per what we have seen from the word of God. We interact with others as per what we have heard from the word of God. We also relate to God as per what we have studied through the word of God. And even our life, our life is the product, our life the way it is, particularly on our relationship with our maker. It is by the knowledge that we have concerning who God is and the knowledge that we have understood and the knowledge that we apply in our daily life. So that is, that is how we are. So the word of God is critical. So we need all the time to interact with the word of God. How do we interact? We study the word of God by faith. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, as we study the word of God, the Bible declares that uh, the Holy Spirit will remind you, will remind you and will reveal to you. So it is your responsibility to study. And once you study, then even when the situation comes, you are away. The Holy Spirit will be there because one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is that of a helper. He will be there to help you, to remind you what God says. And that now will make us remain connected to God. So we be aware of busyness. Business, being busy such that we don't have time to stand the word of God, we don't have time to pray, we don't have time to meditate on the word of God. So the word of God is the foundation of all other Christians' discipline. And it needs to be embraced, it needs to be studied, it needs to be loved so that we may grow. Actually, the scripture says in the book of Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are being ad admonished that we may grow. Growth is a requirement which is needed for every believer. And it is your responsibility to take chance and you ensure that you grow in the grace of our Lord and in the knowledge of knowing our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we know God? We only know God through the scripture. Because the scripture, it is the written letter to us. So my dear people, wherever we are, let us embrace the word of God. And once we understand the word of God, it is critical. It is very, very important that we customize that word. Customizing here means we make that word personal. Seeing God speaking to you directly in in active voice. When you study the word of God, don't see as if God is speaking to somebody else. It is He is speaking to me. Even right now, as I'm sharing this message to you, God is speaking to me. He is addressing me. He is dealing with me first. Then you second. So when you study the word of God, see God in every scripture. See Christ in every scripture. And through that now, you are going to grow. My prayer to us as a generation in 21st century, that there is nothing which will come in between us and our maker. Because actually when we allow it to come, it is not going to fulfill. It is not going to satisfy us. Rather, it will just drain us. It will become us. It will make us become frustrated. It will make us become tired. But now when we pursue 
the kingdom of God and its righteousness, as the scripture declares in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 33, that we should seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness, then the other things will be added to us. That should be our endeavor. That should be our call in the name of Jesus. And always remember 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9, God has not called us to wrath, but God has called us that we may receive salvation, eternal salvation, through His Son, Jesus Christ. So God loves us so much. He is our Father. So come to Him every day, every moment, through prayer. The good thing is that you can pray every, anywhere, any place, all the time. You can pray all the time. Currently, there is no limitation. There is no boundary. There is no barrier. Through the name of Jesus, you can pray wherever you are. And you can stand the word of God wherever you are. So please, let's be aware of business. The business send you in our society, which make us have no peace with ourselves, which make us have no peace with God. And without you having peace with God, then you can be sure there is no peace. Today, today it is 21st century. Many people are even oppressed. They are depressed. They have terminal diseases because of lack of time. With themselves, they are pursuing the vanity, they are pursuing the weed, they are pursuing the weed and they will never catch it. So, come on, let's come back to our Creator, let's have time with our Creator, let us commune with our Creator who knows us, who created us, who loves us, who knows our future, who knows our tomorrow. Let us fix our eyes unto Jesus. Let's all the time fix our eyes unto Jesus. Let allow God to work in us because actually the Bible declares that. Uh, God called us because he foreknew us. He called us, he has chosen us, and he is with us, and he will never leave us, he will never forsake us. He is always going to be with us wherever we go, no matter what happens. Even in time of trouble, he says that he is going to be with us, he is going to deliver us, he is going to show us his goodness, and he is going to satisfy us our life with his salvation and with the good things. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. How I love Jesus. For he first loved me. And number two, on how to avoid uh, going back to carnality, it is by being aware of the culture which we are living in, or being aware of the system of the world. Actually, Christ said that uh, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. So it is important for you to know that there is culture of the kingdom of God which was brought by Jesus Christ. And I want to suggest to this, that uh, if you are a believer, it is important for you, even to start with, you need to have the knowledge of what Christ taught. That means you need to study the gospel. Therefore, the gospel, Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, and John, begin there. If you have not been having the consistent study of the scripture, begin there. It is very important so that you have the knowledge of the message of Jesus Christ. That is so powerful because people are rejected because of lack of knowledge. Many people don't understand actually even what God requires for their life, for their family, for their future, for their congregation, whereby they fellowship. That is why they are frustrated by life because of lack of knowledge. So my appeal to us is we, we should know what does the kingdom of God entail. What does the kingdom of God consist of? What does God require of us? What did Jesus teach? What did the apostles teach? What did they practice? What was their way of life? That is very important for you to know. Not only knowing, but also having understanding and also applying that which you learn. So the point is, in order for us to remain connected to God, in order for us not to fall, like the people of Nineveh fell, back to their way of life, we need to be aware of wickedness culture which is being propagated everywhere and by almost everyone. It is very important for you to know so that you don't define your family, so that you don't define your life with the worldly system. If you do that, it means you are in the way of your sinking. You are in the down way to the land of Egypt and that is the place where now there is no God. That is the place where you are yourself. And that is the place where you become frustrated. That is the place where now life loses meaning. 
regardless of what you could be having in terms of material things. That is not a problem. If you leave God and you connect yourself to the worldly culture, which is not based on the knowledge of God, then it means that you have so many problems. Actually, life will become boring. Life will become unfulfilling. And you are not going to see any need of even living. Many people who are committing suicide today in our culture in 21st century, which are very rampant, it is because of them, first of all, disconnect themselves from the source of life. So once they are disconnected, regardless of the class where the society has placed them or they have placed themselves, then they find life having no meaning. They find themselves taking drugs, abusing drugs. They find themselves uh, being confused. They find themselves not valuing what is valuable. They find themselves calling evil good and evil good. And finally, they find themselves pursuing vanity. And as you pursue vanity, you can never catch it. As you pursue it, you can never catch it. And now the life loses meaning. My prayer to us right now is that uh, we are going to understand the culture of the kingdom of God, which was brought back by Jesus Christ. Remember, the Bible is about a king, the kingdom lost, the kingdom restored, and the kingdom reigning. So it is important for us now to understand what God requires so that we can build our life system with the culture of the kingdom of God, with the message of the truth. And that is the reason even why this channel exists, to point you to Christ Jesus, so that you may build your life on a solid rock who is Christ Jesus so that when challenges of this life come you may remain steady you may remain stable because he is always steady he is always stable so you need to realize that uh, there is two kingdoms the kingdom of the darkness and the kingdom of light when you build your life on the kingdom of the darkness you are building your destruction actually you are dying you are killing yourself the angels of sin is death but when you build your kingdom in the spiritual aspect, in Christ Jesus, who is the source of all life, then you have life. Christ declared that uh, whoever believes the ones of mine and believes the ones who sent me, then he has crossed. He, that person has crossed from, from death into life. And Christ declared that this person, even if this person dies, then this person you will leave you alone. This person you will leave again. So that is my prayer to us. That we are going to choose the culture of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And finally, finally, we we'll be aware of counterfeit uh, substitute. Be aware of counterfeit substitute. The, the, the things which offer fulfillment in the place of God. The things which offer fulfillment in the place of God. There are so many counterfeits today. The people who want to replace God. The people who want to make themselves even in God. One thing which is certain in this life is that there is God. And number two is that I am not God. I am not. So may God receive all the glory. So are you. There is a true living God. There is Jehovah, the covenant God, who lives forever. And indeed we are not. We are created. We are to remain created. So there are so many people even who want to take the place of God in the lives of people, particularly in the life of believers who stand, who become a, a stumbling block even of people seeing God. These people could be in the form of anything. They could be in, in the form of many of God, prophets, apostles, evangelists, ministers, uh, or any other title which people could have given them, or they could have given themselves. They want to take the place of God. They want, they tell you, unless you are connected to them, unless you know them, unless you walk through them, then God cannot bless you, because you are a lesser human being. That is how they present the message to you. And because now you are ignorant, you have no knowledge, you are destroyed by their destruction. You are destroyed together with them. Remember, there is no excuse for ignorance. Christ paid the price. Christ is the price. We are saved by grace alone. We are sustained by grace alone. It is by faith in Jesus that we are saved. It is by faith in Jesus Christ that we are delivered. Delivered from what? 
all the powers of sin, all the pain of sin, all the presence of sin. So may, be, may you be aware of the counterfeit, of the people who want to take the place of God for your life. Because when they take the place of God, it is an indicator that you have fallen. You have gone back to Egypt. You have gone back to you have gone to the worldly system. And when you go to the worldly system, it is an indicator that this, this disaster is coming. And when disaster comes, no one will be able to deliver you from the wrath of God. So my dear friends, let us be watchful that we are not going to be too busy for God, that we are not going to follow the worldly culture, the culture which ignores God, and the culture which do anything they want to do, whereby there is no discipline, there is no standard. So Christ Jesus is our standard, and let us watch out for the people who bring things which start on place of God. There is one true living God, and this God is holy, this God is perfect, and it calls you and me to be as he is. Matthew chapter 5 verses 48 declare that we will be perfect as our heavenly Father is. My dear everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for the opportunity you have given us when to share the introduction to the book of Nahum. We thank Father, O oh God, because of the meaning of this prophet. His name means comfort or consolation. We are grateful that, Jehovah Father, you are bringing the message of consolation to your people who are in the land of captivity, who are tormented by their enemies. Um, Jehovah Father, even at this season of our life in the new dispensation, where we are living in the era of grace, Almighty Father, there are many who are tormented by the enemy, who are too busy for you, who are followed the wicked culture, who have fallen the culture which is dying slowly and slowly, and who are following the counterfeit people to come between you and them. I pray in the name of Jesus, right now, I'm breaking every chain, I'm breaking every barrier, I'm breaking anything which start, which block on your people from seeing you, O oh God. I declare and I decree in the name of Jesus that, Jehovah Father, you are people who are called by your name. They are, come, they are going to come to the knowledge of the truth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Who is the truth? Who is the way and who is life? They are going to know you as only true living God in the mighty name of Jesus. And each and every one of us, O oh Father, we shall fix our eyes unto Jesus who is the elder and the perfecter of our faith, because it is only in him that we are complete. It is only in him that we are redeemed. It is only in him that we are we, we continue. Almighty Father, err of my viewers, wherever they are in the name of Jesus, as you begin with me, that Father, we shall build our life on Christ Jesus, who is the foundation, who is a solid foundation, so that Father, we shall not be destroyed like this, the city of Nineveh was destroyed, O oh God. May we never draw back. May we never run away from you. May we never destroy our life, O oh God, by following that which is not godly. Because we know, O oh Father, the wages of sin is death. Help us, O oh Father, because we know we have fallen and we have become sort of your glory. But we are grateful because you sent your son to come to be a gift. The wages of sin is death, but the, the gift of God is the eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We believe that Jesus He is our life. He is the way. He is the truth. Even those who have continued to harden their heart, oh Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that Jehovah Father, you shall send you a word to break the heart which are at as the rock, as diamond. That Father, your word is like an armor. Right now, I'm sending that word to their lives, oh God. The heart which have been handed over the ears, the heart which tarry from receiving you, O oh God. I pray, just like you broke my heart and you made me to say yes to Lord, that Father, you are making them to say yes to you. May you send your word to them, O oh Father, right now, to that soul, to that spirit, to that person who has been ignoring you, that you are one may ban anything that is not of God in their life right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Let your kingdom come in our lives. Let your will be done in our country. Let your will be done in our society. Oh God, I pray that, Father, we are not going to draw back. We are not going to ignore your counsel. We are not going to ignore your warning. Oh Father, 
Whatever you are doing in our lives, oh God, shall be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. There is not a thing which is here today and tomorrow to be no more. But Jehovah Father, we believe in your promises, oh Father. Give us grace to be faithful to your promises because you are always faithful. You are God who always keeps your covenant. Help us, you Lord, as your people. For the sake of your name, oh God, that we shall be faithful to you and also faithful to one another. To the glory and honor of your holy name. Blessed be your name. Bless your people, oh Father, and enable them that God, they may realize, they may understand, they may know you as true living God. That Jehovah Father, you shall not draw back to idols which have no eyes, which have no ears, which are useless, which are vanity. But our trust is in you. Our focus is in you, O oh God. For you are the one who created us, and we are the works of your hands. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. So, welcome, my dear people, to this journey, as we journey the book of Now, by grace of God. Take time also to study the book of Now on your own, so that as we continue sharing together, we can identify one another. Remember to like, to, to subscribe, and also to share this study with other believers so and other people who are created in the image of God so that we may get the truth and, and the truth will set us free. Christ declared that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. My prayer to us is that we shall know Christ who he is so that we may be set free in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. Remember to give me a thumb up and also to click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any single video which I upload every day by grace of God and to the glory and the honor of our Lord and of our Father. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.